Now, where are you from? Shelby, North Carolina. We mainly, we mainly describe it like, you know where Charlotte is. So we about, I say about an hour from Charlotte. Okay. So yeah, that's how we can't really never get it on the map, like how we really want it. So we just say, you know where Charlotte is. Yeah, we down the road from Charlotte. What about Myrtle Beach? Yeah, uh, uh, I've been there a couple times. How far? That's probably about three hours, three, okay. four, four hours, something like that. Atlanta, how far? Three hours. Okay. Three and some change. I ain't never really been to Atlanta like that. I only been to Atlanta probably about three or four times. And it's only been like in and out type, type shit. It ain't never really been on some chill shit. You still reside in Chevy? Shelby. Shelby. You still yeah. reside in Shelby? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was born and raised, born and raised. I probably ain't gonna leave no time soon. Certain part you represent? North side. North side all day. You can tell us that you, in Shelby, like you can tell the difference between a nigga from the north, nigga from the east, nigga from the south, nigga from the west. Like you can legit tell niggas from like different sides of the, of the tracks. Like shit weird when I'm from the north. Well, how can you tell? The way they dress, shit, where they act, their demeanor. Like south side niggas, they, they a little bit more rowdy than north side niggas. Like north side, we really on some on some chill, get money type shit. But on the south side, they, I watch them niggas. <laughs> now, growing up for you, what was that like in Shelby? Can you paint that picture for us? Shit, it's all, it's really about what you made it, really. You know what I'm saying? Cause growing up shit in Shelby, for me, shit, I had fun, be honest. I mean, it's, you, of course you got your bad neighborhoods, you got your good neighborhoods, you got, your, you're gonna have your bullshit wherever you grow up or whatever, but it's all about really how you made it, so. You had fun, was it an up, up was it a rough upbringing though? Rough? Shit, depending on what you got into. For really. you, for you, was it rough? Well, for me, shit, it seemed like trouble kind of followed me in a way, but in a way I kind of, I, I say I, I dodged trouble in a way, but I got I got everybody got their little sense of trouble, you know what I'm saying? But I keep I kept my head straight. <laughs> what was the worst thing you got into growing up? Shit, I caught my first gun charge when I was 13. Very but, young. Yeah, that shit got threw out though. That shit got threw out. So I'm about really it's really about how, how you made it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you on the north, you know you around some niggas to get some money. You see what I'm saying? You ain't really around too many. You gonna have your violence. You gonna have your shit that you get into, just like any other place. But shit is, you go to the south side, you know niggas is on some other shit. You go to the east side, niggas is on some other shit. Just it's about how you approach every situation. You know what I mean? Now, did you tote a gun earlier than thirteen? Probably. I started toting probably about eleven. Why so young? Shit was toting a gun. Shit was crazy for me at first. That's why I got out the way probably about, I say in high school, probably about high school, that's when I really started getting out the way. My uncle had went to prison and I seen that that shit can happen for real. So I really got them really just chill. So, hell yeah. What did he, uh, state or federal prison for him? State. How much time did he have to do? Long ride, boss. <laughs> Long ride. Care to share for what? Murder. Now, um, what was your reasoning back then, though, to carry that at 11? People I was hanging around with, you know what I'm saying? We was always getting into some shit. A lot of fighting, jumping, a whole bunch of shit. So in order to really protect myself, I wasn't that big. <laughs> I wasn't so big, but shit. I always held my own at the same time. So. Shit, you had to do something. You ever had to pull it out that young? Or you nah, just had it on I you? I just had it on me. I ain't never really had to pull it out. I've never pulled it out, actually. Now, um, uh, you were in street activity early, it yeah, sounds like. Yeah, it was early. I, so I learned early. I learned to get the fuck out the way early. What was your reasoning back then to enter the streets so young? I say, I wasn't easily persuaded, but shit, I ain't really have guidance at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't really got, if you ain't got that guidance, you just, 
at that kind of age, at that age, you that's that shit is vital. Like I had people around me, but wasn't nobody really trying to teach me. At the same time, where's mom? Where's dad? Shit, my mom, my birth mother, is we cool, we we good. You know what I'm saying? I started living with my birth mother in the eighth grade. Uh, my dad, we good, we 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 all right, we good. We everybody got the we got our differences, but we everybody's great. We great. So okay, uh, you lived with your dad at first. No, nah, I lived with my grandparents. Oh, I lived with my grandparents. My grandparents raised me. Mother's side, father's side. My daddy's, uh, my daddy's, mom, my daddy's mama and daddy. My 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 daddy's parents. Mm. And what was the reasoning for that? Why were your grandparents? I mean, that's not usual. That's not typical. I really can't. I can't answer for that. You know. I mean, I don't really have a shit. That's, that's never why. wondered why. Never asked why. Never put two and two together. Or? I mean, I kind of, I kind of know why. But it's like, you don't really want to approach that situation. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you just, you take what's given, so you just go along with it. We good now, so everything's cool. Care to share what you think it is or keeping it to yourself? I want to say, you're just not ready. It's just not ready. That's all it is, it just wasn't ready. That's mm -hmm. all. And I don't, I don't never knock nobody for not being ready, cause kids is, I got kids myself, so I know, I know about it. I know about, you know, what I'm saying, just having that situation at hand or whatever. So I don't never knock nobody, but I still had, I was still, I still was supported at the same time. My grandparents was was great with me. So you live with your grandparents. Mm -hmm. uh, for quite a, a quite a quite a what up to eight years old? I can't remember what you uh, said there. About when you, eighth grade. Okay, about eighth grade. Then you yeah. live with your dad, just your dad solely, or dad's uh, there with the grandparents. I live with. First, I started at my my grandma, my grandparents' house or whatever. Then I went to my mother's house, and then you know what I'm saying we had our situation. You know, so we had our differences. So I went back to my grandma's house. I live I live with my dad like a little bit here and there. But it never really worked out, so I always just, I'm with my grandparents. Your parents separated very young? Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I, I probably can, I can probably count on one hand how many times I had them in a the room, like had them in the same room. Now, um, there might be somebody watching this right now that has to uh, grow up with their grandparents as well. Could be a variety of reasons too. Yeah. Um, say a kid's watching this, and circumstances could be different for everybody, but any advice to a kid that has to grow up, you know, especially from the very beginning with their grandparents, not their, not their biological mother or father? What advice would I give to yeah, them? Yeah, would you, anything you would tell a kid like that growing up right now, watching this interview, and is kind of in a similar situation? Shit, I'd tell their ass to listen. Like, just listen. Like, I'd be trying to talk to my younger siblings and shit like like just listen. I'm not gonna steer you in the wrong direction, so don't I wouldn't expect your your grandparents don't expect your grandparents to steer you in the wrong direction. Listen to them niggas. <laughs> listen to your grandparents. That's what that's how I would say. Now we're speaking hypothetically here, mm -hmm. but hindsight twenty twenty, if you had a parent in your life from the beginning, maybe both parents, do you think maybe the streets you might have not entered that. Life would be fucking totally different. Hell yeah, life would be, I get jealous at motherfuckers who got two parent households. That shit would be totally different. Like, everything would be different. But like I said, I take what's given to me at the same time and just run with that. You gotta deal with what you're given. And, and I ain't saying that they ain't just bad supporters or nothing like that. Cause we good and everything good now, but shit, y'all know. Everything, um. So it was a f well, back to the street activity. It was a friend that put you onto it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, shout out to my boy Dro. Yeah, hey, yeah. Shout out to Dro. He locked up right now though. But yeah, hey, yeah. That was my boy Heavy. 
That was my boy Heavy at the time. Like, but I seen that he was like going, he was getting deep as fuck into the shit. Like he was getting deep into the shit. So it's like, and I love my nigga, but at the same time, like, like I I see the shit, I see where it can go. Like he didn't really see like this shit for real, bro. You can really, shit can happen to your ass. So. Can you describe what type of street activity you were into back then? Uh, a lot of fighting, a lot of shooting, getting shot at, to shit, drive-bys. Shit, not me. I ain't commit no drive-bys. I ain't doing. I ain't. I didn't commit a drive-by nothing like that. But I remember niggas getting shot at broad daylight. Stupid, just little stupid shit. Uh, you never got shot. Nah, hell nah. I never been shot. How many shootings do you think you, you, you've been involved in? Shit, exactly like four. Like, exactly like four. Like, I ain't, my, I ain't up here saying I'm gangster, gangster, and all this shit. Nigga. I've been in full shootouts, nigga. I ain't, I, no, nigga. You're not going, I'm no, I'm no thug. <laughs> That's scary stuff. I mean, there's people watching this that have never been in a shootout. They only see it in video games and movies, and maybe never even heard a gunshot in real life? Uh, it's just, shit, it's, I ain't gonna say it's normal, but once you, you grow up in the shame, it, it's not as bad as what people say it is. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Like, it's not really that bad. I, mean, I had fun. Uh, and I grew up in some tough places in the shell, so, and I had fun. So I guess, I guess it's just what you made. I guess, because once you get used to it, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the norm, hell, it ain't, it ain't really too much until like something happens to something close to you and then you like, all right, bro, I gotta chill out, like, I gotta chill. In those shooting incidents, was there a chance you could have been shot? Hell yeah. Could have been killed? I remember this one, I remember one, I think it was actually my daddy, it was, I think it was my daddy who was getting shot at, like, and I was young and I remember that shit. I got saved by a fucking dog. By a dog, like a, it was, I, we had a big ass dog, like a big ass rock roller in the house. It's so like, and uh, I don't know something, I don't know what the fuck happened. We watching the fucking Steve Harvey show. I remember this shit like it happened an hour ago. Like, we watching Steve Harvey show. And God dang, uh, we see the lights and, you know what I'm saying, we see the lights outside, but we don't pay that shit no attention or nothing like that, because it's shit, we, where we at, so we ain't thinking nothing, up, uh, nothing about it. So God dang, we see the lights cut off though. And then turn back on. So now niggas is looking like, okay, who is this? I'm sitting on the couch. Nigga, the dog is right here beside me. And then we hear like, I don't know, some sort of noise or something. Then shooting, like, bro, this is just like an auto fucking matic, nigga. This shit was shooting, shooting. But by the time like all this shit happened, bro, the dog had like jumped in my lap. The dog got hit like three times. Mm. Like the dog got hit three times. It was like gushing the fuck out. I'm scared as shit. I was, how was I? I think I was probably like. I had to be like, I was six. Cause we didn't stay, we stayed on like the outskirts. Well, he stayed on like the outskirts of Shelby then. And I was around, like I was around at that time. I, I had to be like six or seven, something like that. But hell yeah, the dog got shot the fuck up. Like, I was like, damn. Like I still, bro, I still be thinking about that shit. Like I still to this day think about that shit. And uh, one of my homeboys, one of my close homeboys, daddy was there. So he still remember that shit. He still talk about that shit with me. It's like, that's some, that's some crazy shit. So like the dog was your bulletproof vest? Basically. I mean, it was a big ass dog. It was a big ass rock robber. It was like, bro, it was a big ass dog. Man, that shit got hit up like three times. Like, the shit like, it, it came from the couch. And, like, end up walking to the bed. It was just blood every fucking way. Did the dog scream a certain way when it got hit? Bro, to be honest, I can't even remember. Bro. Mm. It was just like... <laughs> I can't even remember. Bro. Did the dog make it? Hell no. Hell no. Dog was dead as hell. <laughs> dog was dead as hell. Hell no, that dog didn't make it. Rest in peace to my nigga. My nigga Serge, his name was Serge. How big was gang activity back then in your area? Gang activity was big as hell. It wasn't as big, but it was big as hell. And I'm gonna tell you why. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne had everybody want to be bloods. So, so from the blood games, niggas would make other little gangs. And them little gangs, they got beef with other, it, it wasn't even really a lot of 
a lot of gang related shit, it was neighborhoods tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas don't like you over a bitch or something. Like it really ain't, uh, it really ain't no blood and crip shit, nigga. We live in a small ass city, nigga. If you really got beef with this nigga, he live right there. So it really, ain't, it it don't be no beef like that. It's about some other shit. It's, it's always about some other shit. But Lil Wayne had some sort of influence. Man, Lil Wayne had niggas. Everybody want to be bloods, man. So blame that nigga. <laughs> Did you join one? Hell nah. Hell nah. Yeah, I, I never really, I don't, I don't knock people, you know what I'm saying? Cause I got homies that I got close homies that's Crips, so I don't really knock, I don't knock them at all. But like that just ain't me, you know what I'm saying? That's just I don't really see the purpose in it, me personally. But I understand at the same time. It's, that's why I don't really, I ain't gonna judge you for this shit, cause I, I do understand. But it's just not for me. You see what I'm saying? Because the way you described your upbringing, you kind of fit the perfect template to be a gang member. Man, everybody think I gang bang, man, because who I hang with and how I move and shit like that, but I, they can't really tie me to shit. They can't, you can't say that, you know what I'm saying, you ain't never seen me do anything. You see what I'm saying? It's just with the perception. I guess it's just what they, I don't know, man. I ain't no gang member, though. No, but, I mean, growing up without the parents in your life immediately, you, you liking would, you liking to be I mean you trouble following you 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 maybe looking at I don't know if you looked at trouble as fun or not but I mean you know just a, at a, some point at one point in time I did I ain't gonna lie I, I did so I didn't never I didn't never get too deep into the shit you see what I'm saying like I it could have been a point where I got deep into the shit but I seen that I could really go to prison or I could really die like. Nigga, there's real consequences to this shit. I can't, this is not fun anymore. Like, somebody I know just died, or somebody I know just, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's not cool. <laughs> before, uh, before your uncle got, uh, you know, in trouble mm -hmm. with the law, uh, was there an exit strategy you have before that realization nah, at that yeah. moment, or no? Hell nah. Nah, I ain't gonna lie to you like, at all. I was on probation. I've been on probation twice before I even went to high school. So, and all I hear, I, like all I fucking heard was, "Well, you're gonna be dead in jail. You're gonna be dead in jail." And that shit didn't stick at all. Like that shit didn't stick to me. So, I just I'm like fuck it until I know a nigga personally got body, or I know a nigga personally he gone, gone. Like, so that shit. It ain't worth it at the end of the day. Like, I got shit to live for. Did you know this stuff from the jump, though, when you first entered? Or, you know, it took for the dead body or the prison time for you to realize? I mean, you know. you. Everybody know what you At 11 into. years old, did you know? Yeah. Okay. You gonna know I was getting pussy. So I know what's going on in the world. Like, I know exactly what's going on. Like, but... It's up to you. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, at that, I'm 11, so I'm thinking this shit fun. Ha ha ha, kiki ki. You see what I'm saying? Until some serious shit happen, like, that's when it's gonna get serious. You see what I'm saying? And it's up to you if you're gonna man up or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up fast as hell. So, like, nah, that's not for me. Like, I'm strong minded enough to know what's for me and what's not for me. How young were you when you lost your virginity? They're like, I was like nine, I was like eight or nine, something like that. Now I was like, how old was I? I lived in like picked the job. I was like, I was like eight. No, I was nine. I was nine. I was nine. I was nine. Hey, I was nine, and it was weird too. How'd you lose it? Like, she kind of raped me on the low. Like, really? Like, no bullshit. Like, this is no bullshit. No hoop. I'm gonna tell you. All right, playing basketball, boom, 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 cross the nigga, cross the nigga, boom, lay up, uh, easy. Everybody want popsicles. I don't want popsicles, you see what I'm saying? I'm hooping, I'm balling. I don't even need a popsicle right now. I don't even want to go in the house because that grandma was mean, you see what I'm saying? So I said, fuck, I'll let them stay outside. It was a girl, I ain't gonna, she know who she is. 
it was a girl, and I, I still be seeing on, on like on like social medias and shit. Like, uh, uh, she just stayed out there. She was probably like, she was in high school, so I think, but she was like 15 or 16 or something like that. God dang. She lured me into like this little shed in the back, bro. I, I bullshit you not, no hoop, nigga. She lured me to the fucking shed and like got the touching on me. My little thing got hard and she basically like pulled my shit out and rolled me. I didn't know what happened. So I went home, told my mom, and shit, my mom got to flipping and shit. Cause shit, it was, it was done deal. Nigga got some coochie. Mm. <laughs> Uh, that sounds very, um, not typical. Not typical at all. Not typical because of her age and your age and not typical because how young you were. Cause I, I didn't really carry myself like a, like a nine year old, if that makes sense. Like I really was like on some cool daddy shit. Like, I don't know how to put it. Like I really was really chill. But I, I blame my older my older brothers for that shit though. Like I really looked up to them niggas. Like I ain't if I ain't look up to nobody, I looked up to my older brothers. And like them niggas taught me a lot of shit. Like a lot of shit. Even if they didn't mean to teach me, they taught me. So I was that nigga before I even realized I was that nigga. And she realized I was that nigga at a young age and she got them took advantage of that shit. Do you think she knew you were a virgin? I mean, she probably she probably knew I was a virgin. I was young as hell. I wouldn't have thought I was getting no pussy either. But she seen that shit. She, he a virgin. Shit, he might be. He might grow up to be something. I can be. The, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers think like that. So, uh, I don't know if you can remember, but were you the youngest in that age range to get to have sex that hell young? Hell nah. Boy, they fucking in Shelby, boy. Hell nah. They is fucking in Shelby, boy. So nah, I know some niggas. I know some girls. I know I know a couple motherfuckers who was fucking before me. So, so that shit is that shit fed. Did she get in trouble for this? Nah, cause it wasn't. My grandma didn't go go crazy. Like she didn't go to no police or nothing crazy like that. It was that shit just like she cussed out good, blah blah blah, shit like that. Does I mean? You know, if the situation were reversed and you were a female and this was a 15-year-old boy and you were a 9-year-old girl. Oh, that I shit mean, would be sick. That's some sick shit. Like, that's some sick shit. I mean, there and could be some psychological issues because of that. There could be. Do you feel like you have any psychological issues or sexual issues because the way this happened and the manner it happened and the age difference that it happened at all? Just curious. Hell yeah, no, nah, I'm perfectly fine, Smalls. I feel good. I I think I I think I did all right. You know what I'm saying? So back then at nine years old, again, I don't know if you can remember, but did you feel violated or did you In feel- In a way I did, I did. That's why I told. That's why I told. I did, because I didn't know really what was going on. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking nine. I know, I know about sex, but I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I used to watch pornos and shit like that. I got in trouble one time for taking little magazines and shit to school when I was little. We got in. I knew about it. I wasn't actually doing this shit. Mm. I was, I'm nine. You know what I'm saying? So I did. I did feel violated. I felt violated as shit. So I went home and told on her. And that was the first and last time I ever told on somebody, though. <laughs> now, since that moment at nine years old, did you have um, sex again soon thereafter, or did it take some time before you you were having sex yeah, after that? Yeah, age? it took. It took time. It took time. I went out here just fucking fucking at nine. Like I ain't about to get on here and hoot like that. Like I went out here fucking fucking at no nine. I got that piece of pussy right there, and then I probably didn't fuck to like sixth grade. And after that, I went crazy. I went fed after that one. I went fed about middle school. That's when that's when shit started going crazy. Middle school, I, I was really cutting up. How young were you when you actually had a child and got somebody pregnant? Shit, I, I waited. I waited to after high school actually. I did, I did, actually, I did good as fuck. I was surprised as fuck at myself. Like, cause I had my first, I had my first child when I was 19. Mm. So, yeah, 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 I was 19. So. You had graduated high school? I had graduated. Graduated, walked the line, 
Holla at y'all, motherfucker. Get my shit. All right, G. So you got her pregnant while you were finishing high school, and then the child came out after you graduated, or you had gotten her pregnant after you had already graduated? I had already graduated. Okay. I graduated like two years. Oh, okay. I graduated in 2012. You see what I'm saying? And uh, I had my son in 2014. So I waited two years after I graduated. I graduated when I was 17. With the street activity you did get into, was there any regrets? Hindsight 2020. Regrets? Any regrets I got? Like, like just plain out regret. Going that route, doing that route. Man, I wish I would have listened earlier. It's like, shit, I wish I would have did my fucking homework. Hell, shit like that. Just, I was hard headed as shit. Like, and that shit. That shit still bugs me to this day how hard headed I was. Like, that shit is crazy as hell. Like, people people tell stories about me to me, and I'm like, damn, I really used to act like that. I really, I really did that. What the fuck? Why would I do that? Like, that shit be bugging the shit out of me because I know shit could be different. I, a lot of choices could have been made differently. I, I guess a lot of pride or some shit. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I don't know. No. You hid this stuff from your grandparents, I imagine, at first? Nah, they knew what was going on. Mm. They knew what was going on, but shit, they ain't really, I mean, they cared, but they ain't really, you know what I'm saying? It was just what it was. They ain't really, I mean, I knew my people loved me. I ain't gonna just get on here and be like, my people don't love me or nothing like that. I knew they loved me and shit, but, you know what I'm saying? I, it just, it make me want to treat my kids better. I guess you can say that. Financially, how did you grow up? Middle class as fuck. Like, I can, let me see. Lower middle, middle, upper middle? Middle as fuck. Just middle, plain out, flat line, just, just flat. We ain't up here, but we ain't poor, nigga. We got some, we, we ain't poor. I ain't about, we, we, we ain't poor. But we ain't got shit. Don't ask for shit either. We ain't poor, but don't ask for shit. That's that's where we at. See what I'm saying? Well, you got enough. <laughs> you got just enough to get through Monday through Sunday. Don't ask for shit either, though. Still don't ask for shit. Were they ever able to pass that uh, that class? Man. Were they ever man. able to move up? Nah, that's where I come in at. Uh, Shit is one way in, one way out. Do you ever have a job? Yeah, hell yeah, I don't work about 40 jobs. Man, the motherfuckers would not hire me nowhere no more. Like, at all. I can't get a job nowhere. So Why not? I be quitting. I be quitting, I ain't gonna lie. I be quitting. I used to, I used to blame everybody. I used to blame everybody, you know what I'm saying? But then I realized probably about my 27th job, nigga, it's me. I don't like this shit. Like, it's, I can't take orders and shit. Like, I'm not good with authority. It's like, I guess it's all about how you talk to people. It's the same. Like, if, if you grown, I'm grown. I'm not gonna approach you on no. You know what I'm saying? I'm some. I'm trying to sun you type shit. I'm gonna talk to you as if you grown. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it's not for me. Maybe if I could pick my hours, and I can. I ain't gotta wake up. I don't. See, that's the thing. I don't like first shift. Cause I don't like waking up early. I don't like second shift, cause I like doing shit in the day. I don't like third shift, cause I like being in my bed. So what the fuck I'm gonna do? I can't work. I can't do it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it's great to work as an independent artist. You know what I'm saying? You have to work. You you gotta put your pride to the side and work. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't get up out of that unless you got a sponsor or something. Unless you got somebody put some bread behind you, but you can't. Wake up in the morning and just expect to be some great big artist without putting some sort of work behind it. So, yeah. why haven't you quit music if you quit forty jobs? Well, hell no, nah, I ain't quit music. Music the only thing that I, bro, I ain't never had a passion for shit. Like, and I ain't never had patience for shit. But this right here, like, I got the most patience and the most passion for it. Like, I'm, I be amazing myself. Like, how this, like. How the, why the fuck do I feel like this towards this shit? Like, this shit really be amazing to me. 
But I guess it, it really do mean something because I've never felt like this about anything, like really anything. What age did music start for you? About that, about that Lil Wayne era. <laughs> about the Lil Wayne era. After that, shit, I was all about music, really. I mean, I always had an ear for it, but I wasn't really into it, into it like that. And shit, I, I definitely have to say when Lil Wayne got named, when he was in his real prime, that's when I was really into music like that. How old were you? Okay, if you started in the streets by 11, mm -hmm. how old were you when you got your first job? I got my first job uh, when I was like 15. I worked at Boys and Girls Club. I lied on my application. I used to get off the bus. I used to get out, when I went to school, I used to get off the bus. And um, I used to walk there. I used to get off the bus like probably about a block and a half, something like that, down the road, because they didn't go exactly over there or whatever. So I get off the bus, walk up the road. Shit, I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club just to fuck around and shit like that. Because it's for it's for the little kids or whatever, but all of the teachers, or whatever like that, they was around my age or a little bit older than me. I knew them from the from the block or whatever. But goddamn, I went up there and they just told me fill out an application. They thought I was older. See what I'm saying? But I just told them like, nah, I'm, I'm like I'm 16, because I knew you had to be 16 to work. Like I, I knew I knew that part. So I just shit. But I, I did that for a little bit. Did it for it was just something slight for just for some little some little shit. They don't ask for a license or ID. They didn't. They didn't. That's why I knew it was some bullshit. So that's all. I, all I did was fill out the application. Literally, I just filled out the application. Uh, uh, the owner dude, the, you know what I'm saying? The dude, he knew me because I was always around, or whatever, and he he assumed that I was older because who I run with, they older. Like, I've, I've never really hang with people my age like that. So people always assume that I'm older than what I am. So, shit, I just said, oh, yeah, I'm 16. Had, yeah, he vouched for me. They vouched for me. I'm good. You mentioned you had uh, went on probation twice when you were younger. What were, yeah, yeah. What, were, what were they for? Fighting. Fighting, both of them. Fighting like a motherfucker. Fighting and fighting. Juvenile? Yes. Fighting and fighting. It was fighting in school, and I think the other one was fighting in school too. I think both of them was fighting in school. What age or what grade? Seventh and eighth. No, yeah, seventh and eighth. Hell yeah, cause I went to like three different schools. I went to three different schools, and like I got into a fight every fucking year up until like eleventh grade, like eleventh grade of high school. Shit was stupid, cause it's never my fault. It's never my fault. Self-defense? Always. Why would you get in trouble for self-defense? Because they some hoes. Everybody's some hoes. Like, they just wanna see a nigga lose something. I don't know what it is, man. Like, it ain't never my fault, man. I don't think it is, anyway. You weren't the only one that got in trouble. Other people you were fighting with got, in, got similar fates? Twice, no. Matter of fact, both times that I got charges, them motherfuckers got off, both of them. The first one, he didn't even get charged. Like, he didn't even get suspended, charged, or nothing because he didn't get no licks. So that was some bullshit off the rip. But I didn't trip, trip off, you know, I didn't trip because I only got three days. I got mad because I got pressed, I got charges pressed on me. So, but I'm whatever with that shit. Second time, same shit, went to court, they dropped charges on, on the, the other party. I gotta get on the stand on some youth shit. On some, bro, it's just stupid shit. Like, I don't even understand why would they put a kid on the stand. Like, they, they got little kids in a jury. Like, really, and well, I knew the nigga to ask me a question. This nigga really asked me a question, I knew him. Like, he was like, so why would you something? I'm like, nigga. I know you, bro. You making this shit awkward. Like, come on, bro. We kids. This ain't, they trying to teach us a lesson by putting us in a fucking trial and shit. This ain't cool. So I didn't like that experience at all. Like, at all.
So did they have a kid attorney and a kid prosecutor <laughs> <laughs> and a kid judge? <laughs> that shit would have been better if they did, but shit, judge was definitely a grown ass motherfucker, mad as hell for no reason, just mad at the world. I don't understand. We all kids. Like they didn't have like a lawyer, nothing like nothing like that, but they had like uh, they had the, the, a grown up, grown up lady or whatever talking behind a little table or whatever, and they talking to the judge. Judge, and I'm sitting beside the judge. It got the the little jury was full of kids, bro. Full of kids my age. And it was like a little mini court. Shit was fucking stupid, really. And I imagine each time this happened, you got kicked out of school. I always got suspended. But they ain't never really get to kick me out because I was smart. Like they ain't they wanted to kick me out, but then they get to looking at my report cards and shit. They were like, well, damn, he's smart. It's like, exactly, motherfucker. I do my work. It's y'all. Like, it's not me. I do my work. Once I do my work, what can you say to me? What can you, you can't say nothing to me. Leave me alone. I did what you asked. Now, it's my time. Leave me alone. You see what I'm saying? Like, other than that, I don't understand what, what what's the conversation about. And my grades going to speak for themselves. I ain't the smartest nigga, but I'm damn sure not a dummy. Like, that's for damn sure.